man. I always forget how nice the music is in the hotel. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, very whimsical and whatnot. Very, uh, very like, yay, uh, a fancy hotel. Hooray. <laughs> Yippee. <laughs> <clears throat> hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to more Honkai Star Rail. Last time we started the 2.1 quest. Whole lot of talking with Aventurine. I mean, it was mainly us with Adventure, but then we also got stuff with, like, Akira and Sam. Some wealth. Also, also with uh, the Astro Express crew. And our... I just know that we need to get in contact with the Bloodhounds. I think it's to look for Adventure because we got a little side stuff with him. He was with Dr. Ratio. My dude. And shit, down, shit went down between him and... Sunday. And how everything will shake out there, who knows? But who cares because Topaz is here. <laughs> Hi, Topaz. How does it feel to be in business with Aventurine? I bet you're not used to it. He's a... It's not really a shrewd businessman. I don't think... Sh do shrewd people gamble? No, they're just kind of slimy. He is slimy in a different way. Yeah. Maybe like a fruit? I saw someone actually call him a, a tangerine because he's fruity. So I'm going to go with that for right now. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But, everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. Isn't he like your boss, though? It seems like incredibly irresponsible that's how he conducts most of his business. But Aventurine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch, and basically never lost a gamble. Which is why, on the issue of retaking Panna County, I'm watching with keen interest. Is that good, huh? It only works in all parties' interests are aligned. Of course. It's business, after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. As for the two cases... Apologies, but... I don't have much info on them, either. All I can do is ask you to keep digging for more details. Welp. Also, this is like the only like named NPC I could think of that actually walks around. <laughs> I feel like most of them are just, you know, stationary. Anyway, I guess we gotta talk to some uh nameless NPCs to move the quest forward. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What what do you want? Ooh. Sounds a bit like a swashbuckler. We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything else. Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. Because Topaz did a bad? So that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. Oh yeah, they were. Okay. So I guess as soon as, uh... <laughs> As soon as the Bloodhound family sniffs something, they just like put eyes on it to make sure they don't do anything suspicious. Huh. We meet again. <laughs> Remember me? We meet again. Uh, it's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. You want to fight? Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep running into people you've beaten up before? Because they have fragile egos and they want to beat me up too. <laughs> but they can't because they're... I'm different. I'm so much better than them. Uh, I got business with your captain. Business with your captain? Where is he? You need to pull some records for me. It's for the official business. When's our lunch break? Mmm, hungry.
I got business. That's right. We're investigating a murder for the family. Can we speak to your captain about the case? Oh, uh, well... Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. And he immediately returns from, from Dream's Edge. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do, fellow guests? What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. Yeah, they are, they are, that's right. We have nothing to report. Please leave. Ah, uh, you know, you just don't want to say it. Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Got him. Uh, why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher, the one she mentioned, right? I think he looks like a captain. We, we have nothing to report. Please leave. All right, fine. Sheesh. All right, Dream's Edge. There. Okay. Into the dream pool, on to the golden hour, into the place where we had a tender moment with our f friend? Yeah, just friend, just friend. Oh, such tight security. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. It totally wasn't because Gallagher. of me. Gallagher. Uh, where could he be? Claudia's here. Just as I thought, Miss Claudia's here. Hmm. He absorbed the emotions from these children first. C Claudia! Oh my god, it's Miss Claudia in the flesh. Finally in person. Yeah, staying here for a week is paying off. Shush. Keep her voice down. What if you scare her away? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chill. Yeah, yeah I, I'm much better now. You're so awesome. You managed to keep your cool while facing your idol. Let's just pretend to accidentally bump into her and maybe ask for an autograph. Hold on for a moment. Huh? Well, what are you waiting for? There's nothing around here. I, I'm getting nervous. Okay, let me calm down a bit first. Who the fuck's Claudia? Dreams <laughs> are supposed to be confusing. Um. Claudia? Whomst? Whom's Claudia? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What my Mr. Benny's must You all need to report this to the family immediately. Yeah, I did well, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> oh, that's Claudia. Literary girl. Is that all she is as an author? Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. Hold on a minute. I think I've seen you before. The, the gray-haired one. Nah, you must be mistaken for an old guy. How much trouble have you stirred up exactly on Penicone? I was just doing stuff. This ain't it, Chief. You got the wrong gal. That's right, it's a me, Clocky. Got the wrong gal. It was you the last time yelling about some clockwork friendship while beating me up with that silver haired girl. It was funny, right? Oh wait, no, you're the you're you're the butt of the joke. Uh it could be something funny to look back on. Uh, uh. Uh. I'm not letting you get by this time. Please leave, or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. <laughs> get on your knees. Huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? Nothing! Hold on, sir. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. Uh, he didn't send you all here? 
What if he goes by a different name in the Bloodhound family? It was the security officer who dispatched us. That's all I can divulge. Uh, he'll do. He's the one we've been looking for. <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? We're really sorry for troubling you. <sighs> Let's think of another way. Another way? Uh, that's it! Didn't they say something about that... Uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind? Can you perform it again? That... Uh, clocky magic! At least she kind of believes me. Just what I've been waiting for. But I can't abuse it for evil doings. No, that's what I've been waiting Please. for. Alice performing emotional manipulation. Uh, Yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday and Saturday it was. <laughs> Sorry. No can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. But there's a unique character model over there. I have to get in. Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? Right. You and this Bloodhound family member have met before, and you know he's a very up upright, but you're also aware that principles sometimes don't matter when a person is in a good mood. <laughs> what do the other ones do? You punk! Why can't you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The security officer's word is absolute law. I told you that place up ahead is off limits. To wind, to rain, even if the Dream Master was here, they aren't getting in. To how's the Dream Master? Oh, probably Sunday. It doesn't rain in the golden hour. That's just a metaphor. A metaphor. Don't you get it? No. Oh, I'm warning you. If you keep insisting, I'm going to have to show you my true power. Um, uh, he looks kind of angry now. Should we? <laughs> uh, come at me, bro. You dare defy me and my baseball bat? Come at me, bro. Humans never learn. Oh, great. Even if Klipoff were here, they wouldn't be able to protect him. There is no meaning to death in defiance. Why do you not understand? Sweet Dreams Troop, charge! Teach them a lesson they won't forget! Aw, oh, damn. I was kind of hoping I could, like, do sad, too. No. Damn it. I guess I had one choice and I fucked it. In the ass. It <laughs> feels real fucking bad. Uh, do the funny. We are funnying so hard right now. Barrel, 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 barrel. Huh. Am I destined to relive this outcome? <laughs> Looks like you and I have been plunged into a cycle of despair. Oh, what's he talking about? However, this time I will sever the chains of tragedy. The only way any of you will pass is over my dead body. He doesn't have to be so melodramatic, does he? <sighs> Looks like he still doesn't want to divulge anything. Damn. I mean, I guess we got some credits out of it. <laughs> the principal but health family member has become unusually gloomy. You have to think of a way to get him to lighten up. Let's 
try to say it. Oh, you said. Oh, they said lighten up, not wetting up. Whoops. Lot insist on doing this. Yes. <laughs> Push him against the wall. Shove him in a locker. Sorry, but human lives and the family's reputation are at stake. It is imperative we know everything about the case. No, I meant to say. Do I really have to get down on my knees and grovel? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll have to decline. <laughs> Yay, we can get him on his knees. I didn't think you were the type who would kick someone when they were down. If that's the case, I'll just have to acquiesce to everyone's wishes. Lower my esteemed head and plead with everyone. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, no need. Uh, standing is just fine. You don't need to do that. <sighs> Looks like he still doesn't want to divulge anything. Damn it. Principal Bloodhound family member is mired in endless sorrow. As compensation, you have to think of a way to comfort him. Alright. We got our results. Be happy. <sighs> Let me see what time it is now. Fun time! Not angry or sad time, but fun time. Whoa! It's this time already? What? <laughs> time to clock out! And no one's gonna stop me. I prince member of the Blood Hub family laughed heartily and left the scene. Uh, what? Damn, he was working overtime. I wanted to get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours, it's kind of dangerous. Hmm. A little bit. I talked to an old guy that had like a panic attack, but don't worry, it got resolved. <laughs> At least he won't be getting in our way again. Let's go Don't worry about it. And ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Welcome. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. It does indeed. <laughs> Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. <laughs> I don't know why the the scarf he has with like the dog with like the dog prints on it. I know it's supposed to be like grr, I'm grr, like I'm a bloodhound. It just kind of looks cute. I don't know. <laughs> it's very adorable of you, Gallagher, to have that to have that scarf with you or Sash thing? Sash. Mr. Gallagher, you even know my name. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. I had an encounter with this lady in the Golden Hour. I remember that little silver-haired girl was there, too. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. Is that what the family has ordered us to investigate? We are sorry, too. And that's why we're here. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it. In the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. That happens a lot. Why? What's wrong with the family? Uh, it's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Okay, I'm two of those. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. Well, you got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure. Come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. At this moment, on the other side... Where are we going? Oh, another POV change. Okay.
Hey, Box. How you doing? Doing more of the Honky Donk Star Rail. Wanted to get to it this weekend, but I was just <laughs> busy. Even after that, so we can get done with it in a cup. And uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Night. We'll see. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Hmm. The interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinnacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits. And so does the Divines. That doesn't what do you mean by that? Kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Mm, I mean, he's... He, he is a smart feller. Spent six hours one sitting, this update story right after I... You woke up, and by the end of it, you felt like you had ingested psychedelics. Okay. Just what I expected from a dream world. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. That's collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. Oh no, the family's creation of the dream is the big cop, big, big, big bad against him because I can't think of words. Is the, the family's also the problem. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? <laughs> we still haven't gotten to that yet. Of course. That's if I remember. God damn it. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the sword. And then quickly lets go in the blink of an eye. Hmm. <sighs> Don't mind me. It's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Hmm. Take your time. Don't kill me. <laughs> that should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacone. Ask away. Just, just a little, heh, okay, I got it. <laughs> Alright, okay, girl. Now, regarding the moment of daybreak. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. And they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. 
Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Hmm. Because you're a tailor or hmm. His secret trait tailor. I think I I mean I'm pretty sure Akron is a lot older than like well, the spider look. I think that's how it works. Is it? I don't know, she's like an emanator or some shit. Uh, regarding the Gilded Hour. Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city. The economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running. Sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky. All those around him continued on their way, unfazed. Hmm. A necessary sacrifice to work at be work in the Gilded Hour forever. About the Blue Hour. I hear the Blue Hour is uh, very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? <laughs> Are you perhaps into romance? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide anchored along the Sea of Dreams where soft music and dancing persist endlessly every night. Oh. That actually kind of bangs. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long-departed lover to return. Waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I know that this isn't what the words derive from, but just saying there's a wizened lady, just I just think that they're a wizard. And thinking of wizards automatically just makes you think of the Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Which is probably a faction that does exist on Pentacony, but... Maybe a side quest. Please. In the sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Pentacony to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Oh well. She let go. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. Hmm. I wonder who that wizened lady could be. Moment of dusk. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism. The moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. I didn't know that word was pronounced cheek. I always thought it was just like chick. But you <laughs> without the K. <laughs> then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price, and everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there, who was preparing to auction himself. When someone wins a bid, under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. Hmm. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his thirteenth. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. I wonder how long Acheron's has been here. Because it seems like she's just done a lot of shit in a very short amount of time. 
This time around, there were no successful bids for him. What do you mean by that? Okay, that's everything. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Panacone wasn't like this a long time ago, nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities, watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people, where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. Hmm. There might be a way to change everything. She gets lots and gets it done in a random order instead of being able to stick to the order. <laughs> well, like the order of things that... I mean, Walter's kind of like gave her questions about certain things and... It seemed to follow an order, or maybe it's a thing to her like... In the moment, she doesn't really know what she's doing. Or maybe she does and forgets it soon after, but it's only when she unsheaths the sword, she's like, Oh yeah, that's what I did. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? Also, I know that, uh, you know what happens in the story, so, like, uh, you know, don't, 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 don't lead on too much, don't lead on too much. Also, I should ask, uh, how's the value? Oh, fuck. Uh, hello. Hello, Jabin and Jabin's chat. Welcome to the stream. Not soiling anything as far as that. I, I figured you would be. Hello, guys. Hello. Uh... I- I am Firo, although I'm pretty sure the people here <laughs> have been in here before. We are going to be doing more of the 2.1 story. Uh, maybe we'll get it done today, who knows? <sighs> Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. Oh? There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual atom. Oh no, is this the part where I should have... <laughs> I looked at my impact third lore? Son of a bitch. Well, it could get it? Absolutely. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. I wonder if the song playing right now is also from Impact Third. Because it just sounds different from Star Rail. They slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual atom became unbreakable. Mm. <laughs> Welt Lord, absolutely nothing else. Yes. I I looked at Welt Lord, did not click on any of the other links, did not look at any other videos about Hunkai. <laughs> yes, yes, only Welt, only, only for our dad. And yet, you stand here right now. Which also means... That man failed. Because we can change the destiny of this dream. 7JJJ3 in a good minute. That, gave, that got like a big update too, didn't it? Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. 
And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that... Sea of Nihility? Countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. Going for a work, Jabin? Okay, thanks for the lurk. Look, I, I will slay. I'll do my best to slay queen. Or king. A fitting metaphor for the nameless's trailblazing spirit. Goddamn. I already said earlier, I don't understand a metaphor. Why do you keep saying this shit again? Uh. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar, yet different, worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike, yet don't. I too have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds, witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you, even if not completely similar, the story you just told. It overlaps with my past. And within that abyssal dream. Oh. I ended that man's life. Alone. Hmm. Shout to Fifi goes, Reaver, give to me a subject of this to her. I love this not emo. You say you never heard of him, but you went, but you had to be a part of like that. You had to at least, like, follow them to get a gift sub, right? It is a very good not emo. Very cute. I am not who you think I am. Nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. You don't need to be fo Oh yeah, if they just like know your username, they could just give it to you, right? Where is <laughs> the chances of me getting regifted? Just, just keep nodding and be like, please give me, gift me again after 30 days. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, Exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. But in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling, all because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? An all-consuming black hole. Then why, exactly, do we even walk towards the light? There's always got to be a light somewhere in the dark. 
<laughs> First time chat. Any gifties in chat? <laughs> Whoever sends me a gift, they can be your 30 day kitten. <laughs> Ooh. I wonder if what's her face is Hotel answering again. Having fun on Penacone? Acheron. Oh, that was a <laughs> that was for Black Swan. This voice. It's not Constance. Yeah, Constance, that's her Could name. Be her companion. I think I know who this is. Though I don't know exactly what you are or what you're up to. My bullets will find you. Until then, you best find a casket store on Panacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Oh shit. Is Boo <laughs> this is Boo Hill. Is Boo Hill just gonna try to kill Akron? <laughs> you better get that damn you better find yourself a damn casket so I can put your body in it. Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron, too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? Oh yeah, this is technically Acheron's room. Right, right. I, I just remembered. I'm the Garden of Recollections memo keeper. <laughs> oh, hi, pretty lady. <laughs> This is the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. I'll leave a round for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger, yes? I have something to ask you. Uh, one thigh pick for we can have sub. I think it's like the perfect or oh, really flashy cowboy thing with boot hill and it bothers me that it is on the dumbest character design ever. I love a really flashy cowboy. He's not that dumb a design. I like him. I liked his design a lot more when I noticed the shark teeth. Also, like how unapologetically, unapologetically cow space cowboy he is. <laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? Sure. Very tempted to Go pull. Ahead. Very tempted to try to get him. Um, even though I, my account doesn't really have a need for him. It's just because I like him. <laughs> but that right. hasn't stopped me. I only want to ask. How exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll be on Penacone soon. Uh, memo keeper, go buy a bottle of his Donna's white oak and warm it up, and I'll raise a glass to you. That lady's past. <laughs> well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, sure, you best get a chair and take a seat. That woman, named Acheron, is an emanator who should not exist. Should not exist? She wasn't supposed to be one. The reason I hate him is because I'm already emo enough and do not need another reinforcer trust trust. You think he's here just because of the black and white hair? Ah, uh, I don't know. I guess so? I just like black and white. Not only are they two good colors, not only are they colors really good together, they're also stellar Pokemon games. Oh, we're going back to Tangerine. This fruity fella right here. <laughs> Uh, 
You fucked me, Ratio. You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? <sighs> I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So, the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> my, what an honor. I wonder if he's being serious about that title or being sarcastic. Yes. And I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the Harmony? Well, my conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family, and that they hold the secrets of Penicone. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the Reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Hmm. Let's just wait and see. So everything went according to plan for him? He just didn't know about the potentially dying part? Okay. Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. That too. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacone. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. <laughs> You are indeed a gambler. An insane one at that. <laughs> Giving money to people is his favorite habit. He need he needs to do is to sustain that. Well, maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's this? Medical advice? Or a very weird looking EpiPen. <laughs> you catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> the voices! Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you, you wing-headed scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway, <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. So it begins? Oh no. Mundane insights. A most exquisite scroll holding a doctor's prescription within. Doctor Ratio advises you to only unveil in a moment of life or death. Like distress is something troubling you, so you can figure it out yourself. Tool Icarus. Dance macabre or macabre. Hmm. Also, I should switch up my team for this a little bit. Uh, hmm.
damn. If I actually had my ratio built, I would have slapped him on this team, even though he canonically left. <laughs> just, just don't think about it. Just don't think about it. Uh, hmm. So I want this entire story experience without changing my team. I mean, like, you can kind of stick with the same team for, like, story stuff, but it's for, like, end game content where you actually need to, like, you know, actually think about making a team. <laughs> or I'm just thinking about, like, a team I can make with Topaz. It would be Ratio if he was built. Or Clara, even, but I don't have her built either. <laughs> Baby girl, Marge. Uh, she has a follow-up attacker, but I don't need two preservation <laughs> units. Um, uh, I nah, never mind. I have a follow. I I want to build a follow-up team, but I just have pieces and and like nothing's actually made. Also, the screen get darker, or uh, I don't know. Let's not waste too much more time then. Hello, LaRose. Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Oh, you're the one I talked to, like, off-screen. Yeah, this lady tried to sing a song. Well, well, this person is a singer, and she's like, Oh, I want to sing, like, a song of, like, my people. And I'm just like, yeah, go ahead, and do it. And everyone's just like, this sounds fucking awful. So then it's just like, oh, so then I had to go back, like, yeah, upon feedback, uh, the song of your people kind of sucks, so you should go back to... Uh, what got you uh, uh, popular in the first place? Here, I got these gems for you. Wow, how fabulous! But why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Uh, it's force a habit. Well, you see, I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much, sir. If you ever get the chance, please feel free to come by and indulge in my singing. Hmm. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know anything interesting about death? Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> Oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panacone. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death, but there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. Ooh. It was like Spooky. they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. Yeah, it's a damn family guarantee, baby. Thank you. This will make for a very juicy headline. May she pay protect us. <laughs> Unexplained coma. That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. I can feel something inside my head. Is the harmony starting to kick in? The 100% of this plan is crazy because at some point he stopped paying attention to what the dudes were saying. I'll... For me, it's like, okay, I understood him at the time, but like after a couple days, I'll probably forget. The only reason why I remember LaRose is because I literally did it, uh, it was either Saturday or yesterday. So it's just Lady Sucks at saying hour and a half of blank memory, snap back to her because of a pet she was jumping off a roof. What? I didn't come across that one yet. I came across a, an old, like, movie person, like, director, producer, or whatever. And then eventually he got, like, PTSD and I had to find someone to be like, hey, this old guy's having PTSD because he hates uh he hates films these days. 
and whatnot. Oh, speaking of to do with PTSD, it was this guy. Uh, the world has truly lost its way. Here, I got these gems for you. you Let me turn around very slowly. I get it now. This is some sort of prank show, right? You must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? I'm not one of those social media influencers. Thank you very much. You youngsters are always looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. And neither do I. <laughs> a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death, huh? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Now, oh, but what a disappointment. I mean, he sells other people's dreams. It's kind of cool. Or are you just not like eyeballs? The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. Oh, the sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Sick, can I have it? <laughs> Is that all? Yeah, what else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Penacone movie industry. They even call this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights... I don't think those have anything to do with death. Well, that whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. <sighs> the disturbing voice in my head... <sighs> it's getting closer. <laughs> Please be gentle, sheepy. <laughs> Alright. Bochi? Oh yeah, I talked to Bochi too. What did he do? Oh, he thought someone was being like... obsessed about him with like work habits or something. I'm trying to remember. A sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve. To drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Oh yeah, it is way to uh, get rid of the nerves of people thinking bad about him is drinking. Here, I got these gems for you. Oh? <laughs> you? You're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it for granted and spend it wisely here in the dreamscape. Or are you just pitying me? Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have Soul Glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> you really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Uh, uh, Tangerine does strike me as, like, the douchey, like, a douchebag that's also, like, health conscious. Oh. Maybe I really should quit, but not before meeting the Devil of Soul Glad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Devil of Soul Glad? Care to elaborate? Is that just like the alcoholism devil? It's what you see when your liver gives out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse with a long neck.
Does it look like a seahorse? Oh, fuck, I never thought of it that way. It kind of does. It's a seahorse with many eyes. <laughs> uh. It is, uh, much less threatening now. Okay, okay. They say it loves to appear to jump people. Especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> yeah. Very funny indeed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Oh, darn it. <laughs> Now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Oh yeah, maybe all the members of the family have like voices in their head. I mean, don't we all? No, oh, whoops. Gamble in front of the gamble machine. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. Here, I got these gems for you. <sighs> the expression on this hunk of a man was complex, as if you are looking at a mud-soaked sparrow unable to fly and nearing its end. You don't look good, my What a friend. very specific description. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. <laughs> no, no, there will be no need for baby shaking my, <laughs> my comatose body. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. But thank you all the same. You wish your voices felt like drugs? I wouldn't. Because if that's the case, eventually I'm going to grow a tolerance on like the voices in my head. And then I'll need stronger voices in order to actually give me good advice. And next thing you know, um, I'm just in my own head. Forever. Nah. <laughs> Not, not a fan, not a fan. Oh, but hey, you do you. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. I mean, if the voices in your head like recite like audiobooks to you, then I say that's pretty good. The stronger voice is me because I need to hear a real one. Damn right. Well, actually. I do need a favor. As the most outstanding hound in Panacone, have you come across any stowaways recently? Stowaways? How could there be stowaways in Panacone? We've never had anything like that before. <laughs> All right. Good luck with your work then. Uh, what was I even thinking? family would never share intel with the IPC. Maybe, maybe just say you're not IPC. Maybe they won't know better. I went into this dreamscape with IPC attire because I wanted to look fancy. This is the one. It has to be. See here. We got a, a child. I don't think... Uh, I mean, there's like a limited time event with you. I don't think I actually had to do you anything else. To me. Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? Here, I got these gems for you. Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. <sighs> so, are you trying to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? Huh? <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and I just thought these gems would help you speak. So, as an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death? Ah, uh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. Aw, oh, damn. Damn it, they're stopping real journalism. Those bastards. 
How did your boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said, covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. Hmm. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. Damn. Oh, I thought I thought we we're actually gonna get something decent out of her. Cause I remembered her being a reporter. So I thought like, oh they she probably has the deets, the hot scoop. All that other jazz. And then merchant security. Were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Speaking of behind, nice one. Here, I got these gems for you. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? Yes, it's for you. Just take it. Is this for real? Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. <sighs> I knew it. What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Um... Neither. I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death. In the dreamscape. Oh, you sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. Also, I realize that all these people I'm talking to are people I've done side quests for. <laughs> or at least ones that I've talked to with, like, uh, the clockwork shit. I hope there wasn't some guy I had to talk to to make this whole, like, investigative process easier, or it just so happens the ones I'm talking to are the ones that I've, I've talked to before. He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. <laughs> How ironic. Hey. Stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm. Being very sentimental with this man. Hmm. Hmm. The devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular topic in this sweet dream granted by the family. Well, I've collected a bunch of rumors, but no useful clues. Uh, the gems in my bag are running low. Well, let's see if my last lucky interviewee brings some surprises. Hmm. It's pretty nice seeing them do different stuff. It feels more lived in. Yeah! I really do like, uh... <laughs> Weird how, like, the best way to get, like, depth out of NPCs is to, uh, use emotional manipulation on them. But other than thinking past that, just, like, getting more of them and, you know, other stuff about them that they actually, like, are more of, like, a, a thought-out character is cool. But I think the problem with that is that this is only going to work in Pentaconi where we can do emotional manipulation. <laughs> So I'm just curious about, like, what they could do for future worlds. <laughs> it's, it's only manipulation if you talk, think about it that way. So what, what's... So what, my emotion manipulation to you is, like, what? Getting to know them better, in quotes? <laughs> My final interviewee. <laughs> exactly. Uh oh. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Oh god. This bitch. Look at you. 
snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the smell of death so enticing, my fine fellow? <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? Oh, so they did do some shit in the background. Okay. I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. What do you mean? Since when did you have standards of people? Don't you like hate everyone? <laughs> Just a bit of a conversationalist, you know, good opening people up. Some may call me a therapist or something, you know. <laughs> what you call motion manipulation, I call a uh, <laughs> Riz. I have a hundred in the Riz stat. You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? Well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. Oh wait, does that mean Robin like did an oopsie like bef with the family before we got there? Oh shit. Oh wait, that means that Sunday would have done something like against her sister. That's kind of fucked. Dude. That was the first ever ever be generally what Riz? <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> I like the word Riz. It's a fun word. But it's a good thing, if you ask me, because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth, right? Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So, now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Adventurers can get me any day. Um, I like to call him Tangerine because he's fruity as fuck. Why should I help you? It's the least he can do for being racist for to me. Don't you want to see Panacone descend into chaos? Well, I can make that happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. Oh, it's that bird again. It's Sunday's bird. Shoo! <laughs> Throw a rock at it. Go away. <laughs> and what if I say no? Uh-oh. Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Her voice sounded weird there. Is that a, is that a bad? Um, I don't know. 
She seemed to brush to the side and, uh, Venturi didn't notice. Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now, and the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Hmm. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. Well, you did? <laughs> right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth and the means to expose it. How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. <laughs> Eventually, I, I wouldn't do it. Don't, don't do it. She, she'll help you, but as soon as she thinks something would be funny if you died, guess, get, guess what, she, guess what side she's gonna pick? Guess what she's gonna pick? Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Penacony will go up in smoke. Oh yeah, that's a funny button. She is 100% gonna fucking push that shit. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Penacony, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care, too. Alright, so we got we got two things we can do. We can use that scroll EpiPen thing or the button when we're dying. Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how Unless it's not a deadly button. did you manage to bring it in here? I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Penacony. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax, the walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. Hmm. Those who have been wronged by the family, question mark? I'll run out of my 17 hours. Go do a purple speech here. What is that the nod I'd win? <laughs> Copy pasta notepad. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What the hell? I'm sorry, Amane. I'm not even angry with you right now. I have nothing against anyone. I just feel that the world is so wonderful right now. I am the only one honored through heaven and earth. I am honored to be the only one. I am honored to be the only one through heaven and earth. You also have it in Japanese, in Japanese, but <laughs> reading barrier. Ah, uh, language issue. Hate to see it. <laughs> when that time comes, go ahead. Press the button, 
light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big. But sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? Ah, uh, this bitch. Hmm. Hmm. It was not a tattoo, it was a brand? So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Jeez. We are wasting money in the other 34. What the fuck? Uh, aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? Exactly. I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Uh, how much did you spend? What? My price. Uh, how much did you pay for me? Huh, you really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tanba. No more, no less. Red copper coins. I. Can you give me a USD? A USD or credits conversion so I understand? That's saying I endorse what being, but using slaves to remake gladiator fights instead of labor's kind of base. I don't know, both are kind of bad. Cause it's either you, you buy someone to do work for you and only work with no pay or you buy people to uh, fight for you and die with I don't know, glory <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they actually did that for glad gladiatorial fights I, it was either like criminals or slaves that were like put into those coliseums Obviously, warriors too, just to like show their their merit. They die with hope that it is possible to get out. But in this case, it's like okay, they're doing the gladiatorial fight, but the one who wins still becomes a slave. <laughs> That's the problem with this scenario. He's just a bad dude. I'll take my chances. But of course, it is a like that's the possibility. But either way, it's still you know, fucked. You have to kill many in order for you, your own life, to like be free. You know. Thirty tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me thirty tanba. Deal. <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but um. Uh... That won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. 
You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip. A life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound. Or the other nickname I like to give you, Fair Bud. <laughs> Ain't nothing in the rule book saying a dog can be a gladiator. <laughs> what brings you here, Gallagher? Oh, this is fucking stupid. Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Siobhan? Oh, I have the whole day to spare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. Hey, we got more... Actually, I'm not sure what they identify as. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at Soul Glad. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. <laughs> what would you like to drink? I'll whip it up for you. Also, I can't tell that's supposed to be a halo, like a like a for real for real halo, or is, I don't I I can't see it behind your head. <laughs> Yeah, she's cool indeed. I think she is Serval. No. Serval is one and only. She is cool. Who's Serval? Will you uh, introduce me to her? Huh? Oops. <laughs> she's heard us. Oh no, we said it right in front of her. Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. Uh, where did you stash the ingredients? They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> hey, my friends, do me a favor. Go around the bar and bring me any ingredients you fancy. The discussion might take quite some time, so I'll prepare some customized non-alcoholic drinks for you. In the bar? But aren't all the ingredients right there on the counter? Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. You can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your fingertips. <laughs> Queen of funny things it should not be funny. Go ahead, counselor. Try to make me sensitive and normal. You only made me worse by teaching me what not to do. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. She just called me my lovely lady. Even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. It's like those, uh... It's like when you go to... It's like when you're like new to a job or just like the the monthly somewhat monthly like training videos and it teaches you like how to not sexually harass and it you, all you take from it is just like oh this is how I do sexually harass only then can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created this is how I get fired cool <laughs> let me try in other words what you get from your drink is down to luck so don't overthink it. Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. All right. So drink ingredients. Back to me. All right. What's he going to doing over there? 
Uh, oh, I just realized someone could like do shit on here. Let's go. All right. <laughs> they were far really not mine. True. I think I saw a thing. I'm not sure if you ever had like the dare program where, where you grew up, but uh, like the whole point of dare is to, like spread awareness about drugs and be like, hey, don't do these things. But yet they're just like, ah, yes, marijuana is like the introductory to like harder drugs. <laughs> so people are just like, oh, this is how I get into harder drugs. <laughs> this is how I start my tolerance. Of course. Yeah. That's sort of thing. Anyway. It's been about an hour and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and take my break. Uh, stand up, stretch around, whatnot. It, this will be a time for you too as well, so if you need to do that or maybe make some food, drink, beer, poop, now is your time. Be back soon. <laughs> Daughters. Actually, now that I think about it, do I have like a... I have to have like some sort of Nodders emote. But from what channel though? I have like one in mind. Hmm. Alright, I'll raise you my nodders. Where to go again? Yep, here's some geek. Some geek nodders. Alright, yeah. Be back soon.
Hello, I'm back. So yeah, Kafka in a bar is... <clears throat> not to sound too Delulu, but Kafka in a bar is like... are very good vibes. Whether they be happy vibes, weird vibes, how however you feel it. <laughs> Vibes nonetheless. Let's investigate. Uh, hey, look at all these chips scattered everywhere. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came, caused a ruckus with Siobhan. Those chips must have gotten scattered during all the chaos. Can only imagine how intense that scene must have been. So enemies drop gold coins even in dreams. <laughs> That's a clever metaphor. What's up with all the fucking metaphors today? I don't know what that word means. Said, opening a bar in this place, filled with monsters, is quite a feat. Siobhan must have a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. But I have a feeling she won't budge unless you impress her with an incredible drink. Recipe high stakes. Oh, I guess this is for like a synthesis thing. Maybe, perhaps. It's here. It's so glad! But I thought they didn't sell so glad at the bar. Let's give it a shake! Nice! It's still busy and has a long shelf life! Maybe someone else brought it here? Maybe it's placed here for decoration? Don't! It's still no good for a drink if I'll shake it up. But it'd be funny, so I'm not going to say anything. So someone else probably. Maybe it's here for decoration. Yeah, perhaps. Soul Glad is a classic in Penicone, and it'd be strange for a bar not to have it. Why don't they sell Soul Glad in this bar? Did something happen? It's all about the bartender's pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. Uh, <laughs> you're right, Himeko. <laughs> my goal is to make coffee that nowhere else makes because <laughs> nobody else wants their customers to fucking die from a heart attack. Well, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. Stay out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. Huh? Uh-huh. What's all the commotion about? What the hell is she doing? Well, someone's frothing to this scene. Anyway! It's not me, by the way. Okay. Is there anything else I can pick up over here? Or nah? Looks looking like a nah. Anyway, who's causing who's causing ruckus? <sighs> Haven't I made myself clear enough, Miss Amaki? The Dream Jolt hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. You're destined for the Iris stage, not for this rundown shack. Come with me. 
will become the talk of Panacone, a shining light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. Also, a hey, wall. This ain't a rundown shack. It's a shack with soul. Get it the fuck right, or get or get it the fuck out. <sighs> As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else. Give me a sparkling drink. Sweet. With extra ice. Just one moment. What's her deal? We can't discuss the case with other people hanging around the bar. Hey, can you do that clockwork trick of yours again? <laughs> Just what I've been waiting for. <laughs> How come even you and Himiko? <laughs> yeah, actually. Time is running out. We need to hurry. Oh yeah, yeah. straight to business. I might check Discord for the first time in like a week and I feel as if the April Fools from my Guilty Gear character Discord has finally broken all the members. Yeah. April Fools is generally the day where I decided to like not trust anything and just kind of look at like what other communities or people do and I'm just like, okay, that's entertaining. I don't really find it like, I can appreciate, like, the humor and the thought that went into it, but I don't really find April Fool's jokes, like, that funny anymore. I think it's just because I've seen a lot of them. Peter Vogg is king now? That doesn't sound like a Guilty Gear character. <laughs> Here I am. You're one of Siobhan's guests, right? What can I do for you? If you're here to convince me to leave, please stop it. I'll never leave until she accepts my proposal. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. Siobhan just said anything can be... Shaban, Shaban just said, "Anything can be imbibed, imbibed." So they could try various experiments to see what different emotions can brew with different drink ingredients. By reading her thoughts. Well, I guess we'll go right down the road. Let's make her angry. who forced Siobhan into hiding here, running this pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Huh. I get it now. She's not leaving because she doesn't want to run into them again. <laughs> Why are you thinking for her? I, huh? I can help clear the way for her. I can do her a favor. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. I know how to get Siobhan's trust back. Why don't I just kill some members of the Iris family? She'll trust me again. <laughs> It's a server for the sentient bed. It is known to suck. So the joke is that since none of our players are winning, we had to be sponsored by a kid now play the Yitterbug. All but two of the refueler regulars now have fear of a profile a day, and then there is an email of the voice. <laughs> oh no. Poor. Poor, uh. Poor not bed man. 
Okay, so I didn't do anything. Why she won't leave this place? This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. All right. What if she happy? I've seen it. The moment when Siobhan and I share the stage. The crowd is going wild. Applause crashing like waves. The aroma of irises fills the air. A beautiful melody playing. Ribbons dancing around us. And the taste is sweeter than honey. I've seen that scene countless times in my dreams and every time it mesmerizes me that's why i have to bring her back to that world no matter what it takes <sighs> want to raise a glass my attentive listener let's consider it a toast to my far-fetched dream Hmm. I'm Mickey poured Pika white grape soda to the tall glass. The room's clinked. She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. Do you think that people in Golden Hours sleep on Yitervogs? Um, don't they sleep in puddles? <laughs> Also, uh, dreaming within a dream shit, I don't think the family has gotten that far. Then again, sleeping on, like, a bed that moves is very dreamscapey. Very, very dreamscapey. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. Also, why are you happy and saying the same shit? Hmm. All right, time to make her say it. It's ridiculous, right? Our paths were never meant to cross, yet I'm still holding on to her. I'm too timid and shy. Longing to shine, but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need her guidance. Because I'll never be able to do anything alone. You don't know Siobhan's past. And you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched what do you mean she's radiant now she just does it in a bar i know she probably thinks i'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead but all i want is for her to reclaim her place hmm you feel an inexplicable mix of bitterness and sweetness that permeates the air. The next moment that emotion turns into liquid filling your goblet. Well, talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. My thoughts are swirling, making my mind clear, and bringing tears to my eyes. Yeah, I have that effect on people. They just look at me and they just don't know how to feel. Maybe I should find a place to reflect on what Siobhan truly means to me. Here's the payment for the drinks. Please, pass it on to her. I'm leaving now. Family yeah, cannot monitor my dreams and my dreams, and that's how I get to them. Well, maybe that's the reason why Sunday wants to do more shit in the dreamscape, so he can do that. He wants to do that Inception shit. And he needs a uh, the favor, the will of Jipe to do it. I don't know. Amaki has left. <sighs> That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Her drink is on the house. Please keep the money. 
When you're ready, go to Gallagher. <laughs> I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. Wait, did I even grab ingredients? I just kind of grabbed, picked up shit from the floor. <laughs> Ingredient experiment failed. And scholar frustrated by his potent term of a new poison form will prove to be much more challenging than anticipated. If he couldn't produce results by tomorrow, his mind is overwhelmed with with worry, leading him to knock over the test tube rack on the table. The liquids from two identifying containers missed, releasing a pungent odor. And this looks like a marshmallow and. Barbed wire. <laughs> well, you could also just go to Panacotti and get a assault or vi. A a Panacotti Panacotti IKEA. <laughs> that wasn't a typo. You meant that. Okay, okay. Anyway, did I even really grab ingredients? Is consider key items? They are. That's unfortunate. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. Uh huh. So go ahead, explore the bar, and bring me any ingredients you prefer. Isn't that what you want me to fucking do? Nice work. Let me take a look. What? I grabbed shit from the floor. Ingredients there. Now, take your pick. Oh, Each God. Each drink has its own unique flavor, and the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, which one would you like to use as the base? Oh, did I not find dream syrup? Shit. Pick a white grape soda. Let's do that one. The original formula is said to be Hanunu's favorite drink. It's sour and bitter, and the bubbles burst in your throat like swallowing rusty chains, evoking thoughts of dungeons and prisons. Now that you've chosen the base, it's time to pick the adjunct, the ingredient that'll create a marvelous chemical reaction with the base. It should give an unforgettable taste without overpowering the main tone. So, what's your choice for the adjunct? Hmm. High stakes, eternal endurance. <laughs> Do I want to drink chips? Or bar bar not no not no no. <laughs> that one just makes me uncomfortable. This is the most pungent adjunct we have. And my personal favorite. Hey. Before Mikhail left, the wrinkles at the corners of his eyes had deepened like knife cuts. He mumbled, his breath too weak to climb up his throat, caught up in his chest. But I could smell it. The lingering scent of Penaconi itself on that night. Or was it just a really old dude? Mikhail. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style do you prefer? Anything you need, I've got it. Straws with concentric circles. Hanu sign. Coin shaped lemon slices. Oh. Uh, give me the give me the lemon. The IPC's favorite. Hmm. Ambitious, aren't you? Well, it's done. How's my drink look? Here's Ooh. to you, innovator, with this glass of time to murder and create. Fuck yeah. I mean, oh no? To great vengeance. <laughs> well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> so are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors. They're way more sophisticated than Soul Glad. The richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece, especially with the adjuncts. I can taste the spicy and sour notes with a hint of sweetness. And I liked it. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. Maybe Mr. Gallagher can shed some light on it. <clears throat> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. 
The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing more. I also just realized, looking at his back, that the green part is, is it's a it's a bubbling drink. He really wears what he, he really wears what he likes on his sleeves, or in this case, his back. His very well <laughs> defined back. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? Mikhail. I heard this name in my dream. Mikhail. Yeah, that name does sound familiar. When you got knocked out by that masked fool girl, I think I heard someone calling that name. Do you remember? <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite a bit. And now there's no reason to hide anything from you anymore. Let's dig deeper into the case. And of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. Ooh. It's kind of what we've been looking for. All right. Let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, she's a stowaway. Uh huh. She kind of knew to that. Me at first, my age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But here's the thing: we only received bad news, and the trickiest kind at that. Hmm. She simply vanished, leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality, as if she had never come to Penacony at all. Huh? Does that mean... Death eradicated her. Maybe things will turn out different than we think. Is she a ghost? Isn't it fitting that the first friend I make on a... <laughs> the first friend I make in like a distant world be dead. Uh, by the... <laughs> yeah. Death did do the stabbing. That's impossible. The problem now is not that she's dead, but that it's as if she had never existed in the first place. Let me be frank. This case, actually, is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Hmm. Dealt with before? So, death does happen in Penacony, if I understand correctly. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. Oh? I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penacony. And thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a photographic memory like that. Hey, why are you laughing? Wait, 
Did you write it? It's quite poetic. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case. So how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Penacony and its actual managers are at odds. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time, but the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Hmm. So like what, Clocky and shit? <laughs> what are the characters? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world? Inviting you here and causing chaos? For funsies? So, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penacony. And he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. Hmm. I mean, is he actually, or is that just what the family told you? What does this have to do with Mikhail? You don't get it? Well, I mean... Mikhail, the betrayer of the family... He's the watchmaker. I thought we already knew that, though. <laughs> or maybe I... I'm just so smart, I just put those two together. I... I mean, it's also a gotcha game. People aren't, like, the most, uh... What, media literate? Is that... <laughs> Is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> You think the voice actor does going on most of the time? Probably not. Like, they're probably reading the lines, trying to figure out what it is, but have zero context as to why. Also, where are we going? Sometime later. Here we are. Clock Studios Theme Park. Oh. Most popular entertainment center in Penacone. Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the watchmaker? I would have expected you to take us to maybe a library or an archive room of sorts, but an amusement park? The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place. But to me, it's a prison for the planet's past. Hmm. You know that Penacony used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking memoria from the macro void. The macro void? The prolonged exposure to high concentrations of memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped, and people started meeting each other in their dreams, living lives that were almost identical to reality. But everything has a price, and sweet dreams are no exception. In the end, the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality. One of the prisoners broke free from the IPC shackles and fought for freedom. He is Hanu, the great leader of Dreamville, the great peacemaker, and the faithful companion of the underdogs. Oh. Just like from the, the clock, or is Bueno Hanu separate from Clocky? Is he? So the character Hanu is based on a real life person. 
So that clocky cartoon is actually a documentary. History is always written by the winners. However, it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacone's actual history. These characters not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. Hmm. There are so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? Hmm. My friend, have we met before? Oh God, more birds! A bird that loves to sing will never, never have bad fortune. Meant to be as fortunate as me. Come and sing with me. Sing with a happy chirp. Chirp, 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 chirp. Ah, you too are favored by fortune. I'll let you have this game's console. You need to go back to the great tree. Bye bye, chirp. That's a fucking salad, not a game console. The lights would be. Also, these guys too. Tick-tock, quick, 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 quick. Deadline is almost here, deadline is coming. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Which way does this go? That way? Tick tock, the module is stuck. Oh, there we go. So that's the way it went. Am I just being stupid? Could be just being stupid. Come on, brain, you can do it. I, I believe. Okay, so that might not actually work. Now this needs to be free. But then these are stuck. Oh, here we go. We're cooking. And we cooked. I don't know how much further back the other one could have gone. TikTok, what deadline is it that I'm rushing for again? I can't remember. Forget it. I can't be that important. Ugh. Still getting those cubes, though. Or building blocks, whatever the fuck they called them. Hey, huh. so many of them. I've never seen anything like this. Even when they're tracking down suspects. Can you convince them to let us in? Pretty present even from out here. Can you convince them to let we us don't in? We need to go in. We don't want to draw any unwanted attention inside. We can just talk here. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. View here is great, right? We can see everything from here. <laughs> Didn't even walk towards it. Including Clocky. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, 
then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the Watchmaker. In the animation, he's Hanu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the Watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Asdana? It was a monumental war for freedom. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, nameless, history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. Hmm. I wonder if history will repeat itself with uh, us, uh, Sparkle question mark, uh, Black Swan, uh, Robin, is Robin an actor? Kind of. And Omen Vanguards, which, Akira. <laughs> My brain was gonna say a tangerine, but I'm like, no. Not that. Among them was the person who would eventually be known as the Watchmaker. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the Watchmaker was around for several centuries? I'm not sure, but Mikhail was already the Watchmaker when I met him. So maybe he inherited the title. Hmm. How you now, Mr. Officer. <laughs> Never ask a gotcha character's name. I'm 13. Like in dog ears? <sighs> no way. Not even close. Or swap the numbers. Hanunu freed the frontier prison but peace still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Ostana was uncertain. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Panacone finally gained its name and glory. Thus, he became known as the father of Panacone. And also the biggest stain. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No. I'm not his companion. But rather one of his many children. Ooh. You generally can't tell it's supposed to be a joke I just took it at face value. Ain't no way this dude's 13. He has some... He has a bit of scruff. He has, like... That, like, uh... Those lines, like, close to his eyes so that indicates more age or wear, whatnot. Ain't no way this dude's 13. Ain't no fucking way. Booty is clutch. And doggers be nearly 100, taken to 13. Like, I know, like, generally it's like dog ears, you'd like, like one dog ears, seven. It's like seven years. Or like, if we're gonna do like human age. But I'm pretty sure all dogs have, like, age differently. Like, when your dog turns one, it's not actually they turn seven because they grow so fast. It's more like they, like, they, like, after one year, they're, like, 16 years old. Yeah, one person year, seven dog years. Right, right. I got it swapped. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family. But to... Mikhail. And yet you made a drink for him. What did you do? <laughs> the drink I made for him was ass. <laughs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Oh. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family, they set us up. 
Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony, even though the true traitors were someone else. While they continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world, behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, we wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor, the one responsible for all this, and restore Harmony to Penacony. But we failed. Too much time had passed, and the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up. Like a lost dog. The family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness. But it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacony I once knew would never return. It ain't Penacony without Mikhail. Er. We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker and has been secretly working against the family all this time. <gasps> Who could it be? Who could that person be? It's the Watchmaker and Organization. Organization? I mean, it could be a group of more than one person. Well, could it be an organization? One way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. <laughs> it's not you. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. I mean, I guess the descent of to Mikhail could be like Misha, right? Because it's just like that one dream we got of him, either us coming into Penacony or just in a different sequence in the story last time. Also, he's like the only other person that can see Clocky, if I remember correctly. That seems like a watchmaker thing to inherit. <laughs> if it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me can form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say, there won't be many. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening to this old dog. Bark and all. Hey. Hmm? Oh, hear that? <laughs> this happened at the theme park. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me. Good luck to all of you. <laughs> oh, fuck. He heard me bark. Oh, God. How ironic. What's so different between the stowaways projected by Penacony today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. Yeah, he just fucking dropped it on us out of nowhere. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his stories shed light on our suspicions about the true identity of the Watchmaker, his connection to the family, and the power struggles hidden behind sweet dreams and death. Hmm, sorry. And that the family isn't all united. Yeah, the old... They're, they're family by name only, not by actual love. Exactly. 
Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone else, probably within the Oak family. And the death is related to the Watchmaker. That lines up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy, and now we're sure that Aventurine's accusations against Acheron are baseless. From our perspective. <laughs> but hold on, if that thing was made from if if the meme dude was made from the watchmaker and its victims so far that we know of are Firefly and Robin, why would it kill Firefly? Because killing Robin, okay, she's part of the Oak family, sure. Although I think she could be like one of the mutes, because she was losing her voice. So that means like she'd be going against it, I don't know. Or maybe killing people in a dream is a way to make them stronger to go against the Oak family? But again, why would it kill Firefly? <laughs> Maybe it killed Firefly because it realized it couldn't kill Sam. I don't know. And that clocky is based on the Watchmaker. Who would have thunk? Uh, you're really into clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character, not a real person. Speaking of which, that clocky who only reveals himself to you is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. You just need to have a childlike wonder, you old hag. I mean, mom, I mean him. <laughs> it just felt like it. It, it was testing its little stabby tail to, to see if it works on other oak, to, on someone just to can use it on the bird lady. That pretty much sums it up. Now that we've confirmed a lot of our suspicions, let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt, and see how things are going on his end. Oh shit. Well, I think things might be going smoothly, but with him and Acheron, they all seem to be, you know, good terms, you know, fellow, fellow to Hillity bros. Mr. Yang, our investigation has come to an end. How's progress going on your end? Not too bad. The Galaxy Ranger and I agree that the family might be hiding something extremely important. We're now headed to Dewlight Pavilion. Acheron, huh? Didn't Adventuring say she was dangerous? I've confirmed that she's on her side. Don't worry, please wait for a while. I'll keep you posted as soon as I find anything. Okay. Oh, whoa. Acheron POV, hello. Was not expecting this. Are your companions worried about you? Oh shit, we're here again. <laughs> They're just checking up on me. Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. Let's see if there's anyone waiting to greet us. Oh, oh shit. It do be Acheron time. It do be. Okay. So I just need Nihility among other things. Okay. Uh, hmm. I mean, like, Black Swan Kafka, I guess, Japard. There's actually something I want to try with Japard. And I just thought of this recently. That is changing this light cone to this one. 
I will unfortunately lose like uh, the all type res. But if I can like implant another debuff. That may not be too bad. Also, I think that makes your part. No, it's even about the same. Okay. All right, here we go. And she just swipes with the the sheath. <laughs> hey, oh, what's he talking into? I think I made that same joke last time. It's like I'm repeating areas. Also, no puzzle this time. <laughs> Something feels off. A grand mansion like this and not a butler or servant in sight. Could it be due to the disruption caused by the emergency? Hmm. This door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate ourselves. Let's proceed with caution. Just one moment. Akron dries her blade slightly. Within a moment, her breath became imperkable. Wait. I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but I can't come up with any excuses for being here. <laughs> I see. What an interesting technique. During exploration, Dirt using Acheron's technique to attack normal enemies will instantly defeat them without entering combat. When not hitting enemies, no technique points are consumed. Oh, when not hitting enemies. I was going to say when hitting enemies. I'm just like, that just defeats the fucking point. Now, doesn't it? I've... Yeah, we've already been this way. I just wanted to see if there's like something extra now that we're, th you know, different characters and blah, blah, blah. Stream four. Gleam of old yeah, don't don't worry about why her hair turned away. Don't worry about it at all. It's not like we haven't seen it yet. The model in the sand pit. It's the golden hour, isn't it? Maybe the heads of the family used that model for discussing important matters. Hmm. A likely story. And the footprints here are different from the rest. And there are two sets of them. Looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago. Investigate. Can you identify the people who left these footprints? Are you a shoe expert, Mr. Welt? Well, Mr. Yang? There's a unique pattern here. Flamboyant, even. And judging by the size, I'd say these were men's shoes. If I'm right, it could be the IPC ambassador, Aventurine. Also, how, how do they leave stains like that? Aventurine. What about the other set? It looks like they were walking side by side as opposed to one behind the other. So the second individual is likely equal in status to Aventurine. The IPC is eager to reclaim Panacone, so their presence here is not unexpected. Hmm. Anyway, more things to kill. Stream four. The gleam of old cool. Pure skill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> yep, content creators have found a way to grind for currency. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a dinosaur. Um, I don't think that one's gonna work. Oh, hi there. Stream forth the gleam of old blades. He appears to be immune. Did we pass it? 
Hmm, will it actually talk to me? Young members of the family these days don't seem to know a thing about manners. Hey, that trainee server over there. What's the appropriate thing to do when you're giving directions to a guest? Point directly in the direction of the destination with my hand. I'll keep my fingers together and point in the right direction with the tip of my palm. I'm not a server. Bring the guest to the destination. Point directly to the direction of the destination with my hand. Yeah, why don't you just point? I don't know. I like the trash cans, they're so real. Yeah, the lordly trash cans might be the most realest people here. This point? That's through the correct ways to bring your full fingers together with the palm facing upward. That's a fail! Ouch. Uh turn gave me 30 stellar jades. How familiar. Yeah, I don't remember when I actually put in. Is everyone just gonna keep hitting Akron? That's rude. Okay, thank you. Uh what was my bringing to say? Yeah, I don't remember when I actually linked my account. But yeah, there are drops. Destiny isn't chosen. Ill tidings manifest. Anyway, uh, I guess let's do the funny. I weep for the departed. Pretty damn cool. This ends here. Relax. Time to say bye. Boom. It's an oversight of Yehoya's part. What was an oversight? Be using Akron to fight the trash can. You're so pretty, never saw the super. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if, like, is Miho just trying to, like, uh, like, make their game for the general audience, or, they just, or do they just, like, expect people to, like, pay attention to drip marketing and also, like, the streams? I don't know. It's like, oh, we presented it in, in, like, social media, so, like, you know. But it's just, like, yeah, but, like, the whole for reason why her hair turning white is because of emanator shits. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's weird. It's real weird. Well, there aren't any people in this mansion. I've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. This is where it ends. Oh yeah, we don't have a win for this. Still waters of oblivion. That's fine. That's fine. Stand still. Okay, now we do the funny thing. I, for the I do think it's really cool how you can just like go for individual ones. And like a cool three hit combo, but uh, I think most people are just gonna like just go for one guy and just do casually do like <laughs> that damage. This ends here. Damn it. A will forged in ice. Never Me with no social media has never watched one of the live streams when I see the things <laughs> see the things blind. It erases my drug with tenfold. She can do that, whoa! For oblivion. What do you want to know? <laughs> Relax. Memories are Stack debuffs like no tomorrow. 
Boosh. Do it again. <laughs> what a stupid character. <laughs> oh, God. Look, it dropped something. <laughs> it dropped its balls. Looks like instructions from the Sorry, it doesn't sound like well. It dropped its balls. Seems like the mansion's entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. Hmm. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. But no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? Mm, you would think. So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Yeah, but I don't know why. Hmm. Alright, time to say hi, I think. No one here either. Well, never mind. Since no one's around to entertain us. Let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my white can cover you too. Look for clues. Look for clues. Look for clues. Huh. That crown has like a slight metallic sound when she walks. Interesting. I mean, it could be because of the heel. The heel that people totally want to... On their, on their Adam's apple, but you know. Investigate. Dear brother. How are you doing these days? I intended to visit you at Dulé Pavilion as soon as possible upon my return. With the approaching Charmony Festival and your busy schedule, I refrain from troubling you. However, an urgent matter compels me to share something with you immediately. Since my return to Pentaconi, I have experienced a peculiar change in my voice. At first I thought it was caused by exhaustion or illness, but after consulting with doctors, they assured me of my perfect health and dismissed my concerns. However, my voice worsened over time, and, I'm even less exper and I even experienced periods of complete voice loss. In order to find answers, I conducted many private investigations, using my idle time at rehearsals, of course. Eventually, I realized that the harmony in Pentaconi is not pure. A discord lurking within that tainted, within has tainted my voice of harmony, which I believe to be the root cause of my vocal issues. I immediately realized that such levels of interference can only occur if either a powerful external force is pulling the strings, or if a senior member of the family is involved. Unfortunately, further investigation has led me to the latter conclusion. This is an extremely alarming discovery. A traitor has, em has emerged within the family in Pentaconi. It is highly likely that this person is one of the four family heads. I trust you implicitly, dear brother, because of our promise. With the Charmony Festival on the horizon, I fear this person intends to impede its progress, or even use the festival for some ulterior motive. At any rate, I suggest you monitor the other family heads while also prioritizing your own safety. You are the only true family member I have left. There is another matter that requires our attention. During my investigation, I learned about the Memory Zone meme, Death, and my further inquiries led me to believe that the culprit who directed it to cause this series of incidents is likely the aforementioned traitor and the family. I have collected more clues and am prepared to verify my hypothesis. Rest assured, you can focus you can focus the preparations for the Charmony Festival. Once I've thoroughly investigated death, I'll come and beat you immediately. It won't take too long. Given your heavy workload, please take care of yourself. Don't stay in the dreamscape all the time. Spend some time in reality when you're free. I brought some more specialties from other galaxies. Giant Giantoma Giantoma Giant Giantoma? Pudding tarts from Marillions, wild strawberries from 
Akanyako, known for their exceptional size and sweetness, which I'm certain you'll enjoy, and almond and almond meringue or an almond meringue cream crackles from Medicia. Don't forget to enjoy them. May she baby with us. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penaconi, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice. And now it seems I was right. Also, I made the comment earlier that it was Sunday who put the mute onto Robin. I, I want to retract that because I just remembered he was real upset at the end of 2.1. <laughs> Because of what uh, what Sparkle did with uh, transforming into her sister, for I forgot about that. <laughs> so maybe there actually is a traitor. It could still be Sunday though. <laughs> Robin believed it was because the harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Meaning. If there really is a traitor within the family, that person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. Hmm. All right, more clues. List of death victims. Oh, it's more than two, okay. Ansarol, a male how a male Halovian was dragged into the sea by an unknown meme while sunbathing on the beach in the moment of oasis. Subsequent search and rescue operations proved unsuccessful. Note, this was the first case. Can't tell if anything is wrong. Insufficient investigation. Mori, a male from Shienjo, entered a spheroid in Golden Hour and mysteriously disappeared while the sphero was bouncing in air. Later examination showed no signs of forced entry or exit on the spheroid. Note. Seems the culprit could ignore physical barriers. Conventional investigation methods feasible? Imaka, a, a female human. Participated in a talent show in the moment of scorched him, but accidentally fell off the stage before the judges turned around and disappeared in the shadows below. The footage for that episode of the show has been deleted. Note. The culprit is swift and skilled at disguises. Caution is advised. Weber, a male Papeshi, fell down while entering his office on payday in Gilded Hour and was killed by an unknown meme that suddenly appeared. The memories of, wit of witnesses have been processed. Note, preferring to attack wounded or vulnerable individuals? Uncertain. Maybe taking orders from someone else. Okay, somehow that random... <laughs> somehow that off of a, of a Papeshi uh, swan diving into Gilded Hour has context. They are so dead. <laughs> They're so, they're so done for. It's over for them. Uh. Shemit, another male Papeshi, was taken away while flipping over a card at a casino in the moment of stars. The casino staff has dealt with the aftermath of the incident. Note, flipping a card. Interesting. <laughs> Coincidence, I think. Uh, Deckham? Or Deacom? A male human jumped into the ocean to dream bubbles in blue hour in an attempt to impress his girlfriend, but got entangled by an unknown meme under the sea and drowned. His girlfriend's memories have been processed, but the outcomes are not satisfactory. Further, invest further intervention from motivators may be, un may be necessary. Note, most cases are related to the ocean. Could this be a breakthrough? Additional note, scratched it after checking only two cases were related to the ocean. Kaishia. Kaishia? Yeah. A female Foxian was engulfed by an unknown meme while playing Dreamy Slats in Golden Hour. The incident caused a huge commotion at the spot. The memories of most witnesses have been processed. Note. Could it be the Sweet Dreams troop? Does it have the ability to imitate and learn? Multiple culprits? There is likely a mastermind behind the scenes. Combega, a male bloodhound. Really? It's kind of indiscriminately killed civilians and now it's just like, okay. Now we go for the family. Well, family adjacent. I guess it also counts with the Papeshis, too. Huh. Was attacked by an unknown meme before his shift changed in the, mount in the moment of serenity, resulting in his death after a fight. Security measures have been enhanced in the prison area. 
Note, no notable details in this case. Need to ask the Blood Hell Fight to strengthen defenses in the prison and other facilities. Janet, a female human, disappeared while visiting the film history gallery at the museum in the moment of soul. She was drawn towards a mysterious sound calling to her and walked into a screen, vanishing without a trace. The site has been co cordoned off. Or cordoned off. Yeah, cordoned off. This is the only case where the culprit demonstrated speech ability. Further verification is required to determine if this is a false alarm. Monk, a male intel intelitron, was attacked while replacing his newly purchased high-grade vision sensor in the auction at the moment of dusk. Vision sensor? Noteworthy. Annette, a female Pepeshi, vanished while touching up her makeup in the bathroom before the graduation ceremony at Paperfold Academy in the, in the moment of soul. She was caught by a meme to a mirror and disappeared, witnessed by a teacher at the scene. Mirror? Noteworthy. Current hypothesis is related to sight. Chloe, a female Intelltron, was attacked by a meme and disappeared when she blew out the candles during her birthday celebration with her friends in Blue Hour. That is... <laughs> okay, a lot of these have been, like, pretty... Like... Like, uh... This is just straight horror. <laughs> All witnesses are currently receiving treatment from motivators. More attacks occur in dark or dim environments. Is sight really a trigger? Carissa, a female Halo Halovian, was harassed by a fervent fan backstage for a performance in the moment of scorched sand. It was subsequently abducted by a meme during her escape. The Blood Elf family has apprehended the fan. Abducted? Keep a lookout for this fervent fan. Dorian, a male human, took a nap before the end of his shift in the moment of daybreak before telling his managers it was, a, it was abducted by an unknown meme hiding under a chair. Emergency intervention was provided and production at the factory was resumed as usual. Note, taking a nap, plus consider discussing with the alfalfa fam about increased vacation time and additional breaks for workers. Marlow, a male human disappeared after being involved in a car accident in Golden Hour. Witnesses reported the presence of an eerie meme who fled underground at this note of the accident. Note, this is the genuine case of death. The meme must be connected to concepts such as death and murder. Hmm. So that means these previous people have caused a crime? Or just being mean? I don't know. Does that mean everyone I turned angry could be killed? Oh god. This list comprises over 100 cases related to the Memory Zone meme death. However, the author of the list seems to still struggle with figuring out the pattern. Jeez. That's a lot more dead people. I skinned over all this and all I got was that people got mutilated and just went, yeah, that happens. The information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims. I don't see any commonalities among them. It just does. It just do. <laughs> Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. Hmm. All right. Last this book. This light cone is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. This looks like Sunday and... Is that Robin? Okay, yeah, that could be Robin. For a second I thought like, wait, they look tall that I noticed that her, her leg's on a table. Okay, never mind. Anyways, the death meme kind of reminds me of a... Sahi Quill from Evan Gale, but it might be... Just be crazy? Hold up, I need a... That sounds familiar, I'm gonna look it up. Saha Fuck Saha Ugh. What the fuck was Anna on when making that? <laughs> um Okay, I can kind of see it. Because the meme has a lot of eyes, or just like a lot of things that could look like eyes. So I see it. Also, it's kind of flat and fleshy.
that. But yeah, that thing is creepy. Ugh. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. I wonder how their relationship is now. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Yeah, time has a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. I was going to be like, you try to type in an emote there, bud? <laughs> this freaking guy just ran out. Don't... Maybe just like go into the chat and be like, guys, please, I need the cow twerk, please. I'll send you my weekly thigh pick, please. <laughs> For as long as the sub lasts. You're not serious right now. No! <laughs> Keep looking for clues. A letter from Alfalfa. So this is just like... This is just like the family in general. To Sunday. I have been informed about Robin. I would like to express my deepest condolences. However, I must remind you that you now hold the position of not only her elder brother, but also the head of the Oak family. Your every action has implications for all of Penacone. As Penteco is going through a critical period, it is crucial that you do not allow your hatred to cloud your judgment, and be cautious not to engage in activities that others can use against you as leverage. I heard that you are planning to dedicate a significant amount of time and resources to find death. Such action does not serve the best interests of the family as a whole, and I strongly advise you to reconsider it to avoid potential impeachments from other family heads. While you are convinced that death is connected to the Watchmaker, I have met that watchmaker many times long before the, the Dream Master adopted you and your sister. And I have never found any evidence linking him to the Memory Zone meme. Now that you're the head of the Oak family, it is essential that you assess the situation objectively and consider the bigger picture. It is unwise to allocate all of Penacone's resources and manpower for the sake of personal vendetta, as this would bring dishonor to the Great One. The Charmity Festival is on the horizon, and the Watchmaker's guests are all barely holding back their own agendas. Neither you nor I could face the severe consequences if, if Dominicus' arrival is delayed. Therefore, I urge you to control your emotions and fulfill your responsibilities at the head of the Oak family. Focusing only on the festival and avoiding any interference from external sources... From... Bleh. Therefore, I urge you to control your emotions and fulfill your responsibilities at the head of the Oak family, focusing only on the festival and avoiding any interference from external sources. There, there we go. In addition, we must not neglect the honored guests invited by the Watchmaker, as mishandling this matter could lead to diplomatic conflicts with other magic factions, involving us in disputes that could have been avoided. As your elder, I hope you comprehend the gravity of the situation and handle it appropriately. As for the matter of Robin, there would be time to pursue it once the festival concludes. By then, I will provide you with the necessary resources and manpower in the name of the Alfalfa family to help get you revenge. Additionally, I've heard rumors that the Dream Master is not entirely pleased with her recent activities. I advise that you conduct yourself with caution. Yours sincerely, Old Odie. You just realized I had seven sub for one die and I was only paying for three game <laughs> hustler. Or just real lucky. It seems neither the Dream Master of Penacone nor this Old Odie is happy with Sunday's recent performance. They don't seem to care much about death. Instead, they're more concerned about the Charmony Festival and the Watchmaker. Maybe the other family heads don't think death is a big deal. One thing's for sure. There's a lot of internal conflict within the family, and everybody has their own agenda. Hmm. Alright. Oh god, this is a fatter stack of papers. Esteemed head of the Oak family, the investigation of all suspects involved in the death case has been concluded. The findings are summarized below for your review. Respectfully yours, Esme Drott. Attachment. Ryan, a general staff for the Oak family, short gray hair, leading a laid-back lifestyle, often caught slacking off at work. 
Suspects involved in death. Okay, people who think they could have done it. Okay. Percy, a diplomatic clerk from the Oak family. Dark curly hair, suffering from severe OCD. Unable to work until his tie is tied and checked five times. Reshi, a diplomatic clerk from the from the Oak family. Long gray hair, devoted fan of clocky. He's always a preference for the clock element in almost all aspects of life. Connor, a professor at the Paperfold Academy. Short red hair, rumored by students to be an enigmatic figure due to his unkempt appearance. Doriani, a professor at Paperfold Academy. Short gray hair, known among students for bringing cigarettes to class instead of textbooks. Based. Pururu, a researcher from the Nightingale family. Long blonde hair, known for being obsessed with soda and having the research lab's trash can filled with empty drink cans. At least recycle that, come on. Betty, a dreamscape producer from the Nightingale family. Curly brown hair, frail and thin, exhibiting an almost fanatical affection for a dream construction. Maureen, a dream reaver from the Nightingale family. Short gray hair, standard stature for Pesci adults. Possesses a collector's fetish, particularly fond of mugs and jugs. Hey yo, what kind of jugs? Sir Whittaker, the head of the Nightingale family. Short black hair distinguished by his rare orange pupils. That is a very short description. Pat, a renowned actor from the Iris family. Short gray hair featured in numerous classic films and TV shows, known for his distinctive high... Th known for his distinctive thigh band. Is that like a... Is that like a slip thigh band, or what? Borage, an actor from the Iris family, short black hair, frequently cast in gangster-themed films, widely acclaimed for his performances in close quarters combat scenes. Ooh. Keanu Reeves, okay. Nader, a drinksmith from the Iris family, short blonde hair, enjoying a good reputation among tourists for his engaging conversations. Carrie, an actress from the Iris family, long pale hair, known for cross-dressing in films to play suit-clad male protagonists, affectionately called by her fans as the Grey Beauty. Brenton, a guard from the Bloodhound family. Short brown hair awarded a medallion for rescuing ten, rescuing, rescuing ten standard tourists in an incident, incident caused by a meme. <laughs> <laughs> the joke went too far. Carter, a security officer from the Bloodhound family. Short blonde hair, small stature, often spending his leisure time at casinos in the moment of stars. We'll see. The captain of the Bloodhound Guardians. Short blonde hair, stocky man bearing several scars from previous encounters with memes. Alomu, detective from Bloodhound family. Short black hair, known for his unkempt stubble and excellent undercover work in investigations within underground gangs. Corinna, an agent for the Bloodhound family. Long gray hair, nicknamed Fireball. By underground gangs due to her tendency to wear all red attire while enforcing the law. Mulaney, a reporter from the Alfalfa family. Short blonde hair, standard professional attire, exhibiting a mental age beyond her actual years. Gabe, a gambling agent from the Alfalfa family. Short black hair, standard professional stature, used to enjoy a candy before her gamble starts. Lothric, a hotel butler from the Alfalfa family. Dark curly hair, tall stature, possessing a sense of humor that attracts numerous VIP customers. Lester, an auction trader from the Alfalfa family. Great curly hair, medium stature, regularly indulging in a Dream Joy special after work. And Nagi, a project manager from the Alfalfa family. Long blonde hair, are shorter than average Papashi, maintains a calm demeanor that has generated a lot of revenue for the family. There are a total of 52 suspects on the list, followed by Sunday's note. Perhaps there is a common thread among them. I have reached a conclusion. Mr. Sunday has done some serious research on his suspects. This traitor must have been causing trouble for the family for a long time. They all seem to be insiders, but I haven't met any of them. Huh? Wait, these characteristics... What, of all being associated with a family? What is it? No, nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. However, if this traitor really exists... Could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's deaths? Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. That's all hmm. for now. Nothing more noteworthy. Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. Watch out. 
Someone's approaching. Uh oh. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas uh -oh. is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. And Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. I hope you can forgive us. But even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission. So coming here will be unnecessary for you. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here. To ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Mm hmm. <laughs> Can we actually just... <laughs> Are Walt and I actually going to find a way to work together with Sunday? Mm. Mm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. You're, you're saying this shit a bit too loud. While the truth remains a mystery, I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, other family heads share the same suspicions as you, but, in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. Is this getting some water? I'm sorry when they say like IPC ambassador talk about a, vent a tangerine. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of aventurine. While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. He's a businessman, not some philanthropist. But right now, He's out there handing out his wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up. Now what is he cooking? While the family is dedicated to keeping our guests safe, it might be wise for you to stay alert. You never know what unexpected troubles could arise. Hey, yo, why you gotta say it like that? According to a Pierpoint hotline tip, there was a major breakthrough in the shocking Ejhazio Aventurine case. The suspect has been arrested. This fraud case has been linked to many departments within the Interastral Peace Corporation and the Intelligentsia Guild, causing a large drain in manpower and resources, resulting in the IPC taking a massive loss. The case's main suspect originates from Sigonia 4 and is one of the survivors of the second Katika Avjin extinction event, who does not carry an interstellar refugee travel permit. Damn, I didn't know there's a there is a, another Kat, Katka Avgate extinction event. As per Strategic Investment Department head Diamond Sentiments, the IPC has appropriately relocated the suspect in the spirit of the Charter and will continue to conduct further investigations as to the motive of the suspect. Who the hell are you? Her hat's as big as Constance. What pretty eyes. Tell me, do they shine in the dark? Hmm. 
Well, if they did, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. You don't know how many people long for your eyes to be closed forever. As a servant, you should not resist your master. Yet, you went and killed that man anyway. Okay, I need to say this. My head had a crazy autocorrect, and I haven't seen it before. So, like, for some reason, I read Jade as Jeep. And then, for some reason, I saw her name, like, tilted, like, to the right. Because <laughs> whatever desk we're at just looks like the grill of a Jeep. And I thought to myself, oh, that's the front of a Jeep. <laughs> this, this is what it looks like. Anyway, so venturing killed as a uh, his handler or buyer. No lawyer has the audacity to defend you. Perhaps you ought to represent yourself. Not difficult, but definitely pointless. You're pretty confident on your eloquence. Did you also think that when you lied to the Intelligentsia Guild? Ask and you shall receive. You wanted the perfect construction material. All I did was offer a possibility. It was just a small wager. If your luck holds out, the IPC will dig something up from the golden sands of Ejihazo. Maybe even the Sand King's remains. Pity your luck has run out. I'll admit that. What I'm more curious about, though, is why such a grand scheme failed to benefit anyone in the end, including the perpetrator himself. Oh, madam, I already have what I want. To be brought before you for the next high-stakes gamble. Then let's talk about the second gamble. Tell me, what are you prepared to wager this time? My life. I bet you won't send me to the gallows. Hmm. What do you want, then? I want your Lenore to meet with me. I have something to say. Lenore? Is that the name of a rock? And then what? I want cash. <laughs> it can't be that simple, can it? It is that simple. 30 tonbas. The remainder of my... market value. 30 tonbas. No more, no less. With this money, I'll climb to even greater heights than you. Grasp even more riches than you. <laughs> I wager you won't give me this chance. Which is why you should call him here. Interesting. A pity Diamond won't see you. No one gets to see him. From here on out, I am Diamond's representative. And I will decide on his behalf. You're wrong. 30 Tonbis. He'll give you that. And much more than that. Wealth. Status. Power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. Even what you don't want. Kakavasha. <laughs> A good name. But unfortunately destined to be buried in the dirt. You, though. You deserve to live. To create even more wealth. For us. Go. Pick the clothes you like. Then choose your desired identity. And then... <laughs> use them well, child. May your plans never suffer failure. Life is like a long-term investment. Those who choose correctly, do the correct things, reach the correct outcomes, and show the world their value. 
People can't always make the right choices in their lives. But luck has always been on my side. I've never lost. Is it because Gyathra blesses me? Well, if that's the case, she must also be looking upon me right now. My success is inevitable. But... What then? <laughs> Even if I overcome this difficult trial, what would come next? <laughs> what awaits me after this glorious gamble? An even more glorious one? Will I return triumphant with unending riches after countless successes, or... Will I encounter failure? Never to return. What? What? Oh, it's the voices in my head. <laughs> Am I dreaming, or have I gone completely insane? Perhaps both. Uh, that really slow smile. Crazy, but I'm not stupid. Get out of my head, newborn of the Harmony. <laughs> the Harmony? Oh, don't play the fool. It's not the first time we've met. No need to be so polite. I'm you, and perhaps even more aware of yourself than you. Of what exactly you want. You're dying. And you still want to drag a bunch of unfortunate fools with you through death's door. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> a grand unveiling. You really think you can pull it off? Why not? Well, you may have fooled everyone, but you can't fool yourself. I can show you. Before you're entirely gone, I'll be with you for the last stretch of your road. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart while we walk. <laughs> what exactly are you? Most people in this world spend their entire lives just to reach one outcome. And I am that outcome. Kakavasha, I am your future. <laughs> First I'm hearing things, and now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Great. Am I going to be elevated into the Harmony's Emanator next? Why are there no guests here? What's that Featherhead doing? Okay. So let me take a look. Um, hmm. Okay, since we have some people here, how long is this segment? <laughs> because I'm unsure. Another hour or two? Okay. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. Because I think I might... Un unfortunately... Uh, end it here. But thankfully, I can just yoinky spoinky and actually use this feature.
It does have a purpose. We're also in the same park as Tangerine. Do not think about it whatsoever. Ne never think. No surprise there. Never ever think. Okay. This update's longer than the entire law foo. Shit. Lafu catching the streets. Okay. I need to find me a wall. A wall to stare at. Very, very intently. Very lovingly. My friend. Have we met before? I think this wall might do it. Sort of. Maybe this wall. Oh. Oh. There we go. We found our wall. Yeah. I think I'm going to end this stream here. Um. Again. This is mostly dialogue. Very fascinating dialogue. Very fun dialogue, though. And I appreciate you all for just staying here. We're, we're, ba <laughs> we're basically watching an anime together. Essentially. A very nice 3D animated... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, nice, very nice 3D animated anime. Hi, YouTube. Okay. <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. Oh, I actually forgot to tweet that I was starting. Um, whoops. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck me. Well, don't say that. No one was actually in the YouTube chat. <laughs> they they couldn't say hi or bye if they could because there's no one there. But hey, it makes saving VODs easier, am I right, gamers? That's right. Okay. Okay. They can watch the VOD, yeah. <laughs> They'll still get your comment, don't worry. They can still get you being toxic. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go see if I can find a raid target. Didn't really roll my R's there. It's more, more throat than tongue. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, uh I think I'll just uh. Charade CYC. All right, let me let me check them out. What are they doing? Oh. Okay, they just started too. Sure, we'll go there. Uh, I was thinking of raiding uh, the good old uh. What did it? What the fuck did I do? Oh, wrong, wrong button. Whoopsie. Yeah, well, we'll do CYC. Looks like they'll be playing some fighters. That's fun. So we'll be writing CYC. Uh, just for the sake of YouTube. So you can, I don't know, recreate the journey of where we're going. There we go. Uh, they'll be playing some Dragon Ball Fighters. Fighters is hype as fuck. So that'll be a good time. But, uh, yeah. I'd like to thank you all for watching. We watched this live through Revive. Anyway, you see me, it's always appreciated. And if you want to see more from me, check out my YouTube and Twitch. And if you want to see what the fuck I'm doing or what I'm thinking, uh, check my Twitter. All at Vera McNosky. With all that being said, have a good morning, day, evening, or night. Be excellent to each other, and be excellent to yourselves. Peace out. <laughs> Very nice gesture box. Very nice.
fuck, wrong screen. Ah, 